in our previous video we have seen how to create the form for insert categories and insert brands okay we have checked the condition if this particular variable is active okay that is get variable this particular form should be displayed okay insert categories again when i click on insert brand you can see here i am having this insert brand variable and this form is been displayed now for this categories and brands we have to create tables to create table first we have to create the database now for that let me just come to new tab here i'll be writing local host you can see we have to write this one local host php my admin i'll just enter okay now we are going to create the database now if you are seeing this for the very first time then inside this we can create databases on left side we are having this new option and here i'm just going to create the database i'll just give the database name as my store i'll just click on create now you can see database is been created now this is my database my store now inside this database i am just going to create the table okay first i am just going to create the categories table and inside that i am just going to give two columns okay the one is for category id and second is for category title i'll just click on go now inside this first i am just going to add category id i'll just write that one here i'll be writing category id then second i'm just going to write here category title for this category id the data type will be int for category title the data type will be varchar and here i'm just going to give 100 i'll just come here for category id i'm just going to give here auto increment once i give this auto increment inside this null index i will be having this primary okay by default it will be selected if it is not selected just click on this and select primary auto increment is nothing but whenever i am inserting the data inside categories each and every time i don't have to insert the id as well okay by default it will increment the id by 1 so i am just going to check this one and primary key is nothing but inside this entire table my id will be primary key and again and again i will not be having the same value inside id only one value i will be having the value will not be duplicated now once it is done i'll just click on save Okay, our database name is my store and inside that we have just created our first table that is nothing but categories and inside this categories we are having two column category id and category title now whenever admin is inserting the categories here okay let me just come to categories whenever admin is inserting the categories and when admin clicks on this insert categories button that value whatever we are having here this value should be stored inside this table category title then in the same way i'm just going to click on new inside this database i'll click on new i'll just give my table name as brands column will be 2 now here i'll be giving brand id and here i'll be giving brand title okay these are the two columns i'm just going to create in the same way i'm just going to give here varchar i'll just give here 100 for brand id also i'm just going to give auto increment and primary value once it is done i'll just click on save now inside my store database i am having two tables brands table and categories table inside categories two columns and inside brands two columns and inside each table i have just given the primary key for their particular ids okay now this is the structure of the table now when i click on this browse this table is empty i don't have any data inside this table to do any action inside the database first we have to connect to the database so for that let me just come here I'll just close this images folder and admin folder. Now inside this root, I'll be creating one includes folder. Inside this includes, I'm just going to create one file that is connect.php. And inside this, we are going to write the code to connect to the database. First, I'll be writing this PHP syntax. Now here, I'm just going to create this connection variable, and here I'll be writing new MySQLi. okay you can write like this or directly you can write my sqli connect okay both will work and inside this i'm just going to pass four parameters first will be our local host next will be our username my username is root next is password i have not given any password so my password is empty and finally the fourth parameter is the database name okay whatever database we have created okay my database name is my store i'm just going to pass that one 
now below this i'm just going to check for the condition if connection okay if this connection is successful then i just want to print this message i'll be writing here connection successful connection successful else I just want to show the error. So using this die method, I'm just going to display that one. And here I'll be writing my SQLI error. Inside that, I'm just going to pass my variable. Okay, that is connection variable. Now I'll just copy this path. Okay, let me check whether it is connected or not. And here I'm just going to paste that one. I'll just remove this one. I'll be writing here localhost. Okay, now here I'm having connection successful, which means that I am successfully connected to the database. Now I can insert the data inside the database. Whatever I want, I can do that inside the database. Okay, we have just created the database. Inside that we have created two tables and we have seen how to connect to the database. Next, we are going to see how to insert categories and brands data inside the tables. Now before that, let me just come to insert. P okay, let me just come to insert categories. Now here I'll be writing this PHP code. Now inside this, if I just include that one, here I'll be including that, include, and here let me just include this file. I'll just write here includes folder. Inside that I'm having connect.php. I'll save this. I'll come to admin panel. I'll refresh this one. Now you can see I'm getting this message connection successful. I don't want this message should be displayed in each and every page. So for that, here I'm just changing the condition. If it is not connected successfully, only then I have to display this error or else I should not display anything. I'll just remove this. I'll save this. Now let me just come to connect.php. I'll refresh this one. Now I don't have anything, which means I am not having any error and I am successfully connected to the database. And also here, if I just refresh this one, now this connection successful will go and I am successfully connected to the database here. Okay, next we will be performing all the inserting operation, deleting operation, everything we are going to work with databases.